so good day everybody so today um, I just want to share just like a quick testimony you know quick experience that I had I want to help encourage someone you know to not to, to, to be wearing and um, well-doing basically and so the experience I wanted to share the testimony I wanted to share with for what God did for me is I've talked about how um, I had a baby girl 2018 on October in the month of October on the days of the 12th I had a baby girl and um, before I even had her I had talked to God I had talking to God and um sorry my phone's ringing I don't want to pick up okay so I had talking to God about it and um I had said to God you know should I go and work or because at the time I was married I should I work or should I um have, you know be focused on like well basically okay I'm, well, I'm trying to phrase it the best way I talked to him about it I basically said to him he can make the choice whether I should enter into the workforce basically or I should basically be a stay-at-home wife or, and mother right let I'll say I said Lord let you I'll let you be the decision I'll let you make the decision for me basically because I don't know which direction I should be going in basically and um Ultimately, about some time later, he basically, to uh, to one of his servants, a prophet told me that God was going to give me a baby girl. At first, it kind of sh- it kind of took me back because I was like, it was out of the blue, right? But I had forgotten that I had prayed and prayed to God actually. So was, to me, it was like out of the blue, like God is just gonna come out of nowhere and say, "I'm gonna give you a baby girl," but. Actually, that was, that's what I actually prayed for. He said, I said, God, you made a choice, and this is his choice. I'm giving you a child. And it's going to be a girl. It wasn't, now, you can, you, most people would be like, oh, God made a promise, you know, for me for that child. And I should get pregnant right away. Well, actually, I didn't get pregnant for almost about a year before she had came. And the thing about it is, God had promised me a little girl, right? And the year, the first, it, this was like the couple days, bef- this is like the last couple days of 2017 and in December, before we had entered 2018. No, my bad. This is the last couple days of 2016, before we had entered 2017, right? Me and my husband. And um, the first, like the first one, two days, when in 2018, I was after God had given me the the prophet had given me the prophet the the the, the prophecy the prophet had given me the prophecy like what God said. I came under attack almost immediately for that word. The first attack the first attack was out of nowhere. You know, I started having these dreams like me running with a little girl and um basically. God was showing me, like, you know, there was some people that didn't want God's plan to come to pass. We could say witches and warlocks, whatever you call it. And most people would be, come up, they'd be afraid and say, you know, the witches and warlocks can stop your destiny. They can stop the prophecy, right? But I'm going to get to that. And so that's why that's the first major attack. Later on in that same month of January in 2017, after getting the prophecy, I had, I, start, I had like a really bad menstrual cramp. Like it was so bad. I never experienced anything like it. It was so bad. And I had to like cry out to God. Like I don't even understand what was going on. But little did I know, right? At the time, I didn't know it was an attack. Like the enemy literally did not want this prophecy to come to pass. Like it was so bad. I felt like my womb wanted to fall out. Like it's like the devil wanted that door to be shut. Right? A little me, you know, it like it wasn't like I, I was so confident, you know. I believe that if God said He give me a baby girl, He would give me a baby girl. But it wasn't like I was that 
Bro, I believe in. I was just like a normal, you know, like girl, basically believing God. We even for God to do something He said He would do. If He said He would do it, He would do it. And um, I remember crying out to God, and like maybe an hour or two later, the pain subsided, right? And then there was other things that happened through that same year, 2017, like random spotting and. Like, 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 like things like that never happened before, like me getting bite from my aunt, right? And I get bite from my aunt a lot before, have, but never have I swollen up from it. Like literally one aunt, and I got swollen up from it. It was so strange, like all of these little attacks here and there. But I could at the time I didn't understand why these attacks were coming, you know. And then um. It's just like little things throughout the year that was happening that I didn't understand, but I just kept believing God. And but this, I'm still waiting for the promise because God says I'm gonna have a little girl. I was take I buying tests, take I'm um, taking pregnancy tests and testing and see if it was the time. And, and when it was the time, it was a bit sad, but I was like, you know, when God is God's time, God's time. And um. Later in that year, 2000, um, this 2017, later in that year, next September, I found out I was pregnant, right? And I was all excited and so forth and so on. And I told my husband, and told my mom and so forth. And guess what happened? Three months later, I had a miscarriage, right? Now, all of this supposed to be God had promised me a little girl, right? Now, here I am, basically... Found out I'm pregnant. Three months later, I lose the baby. Obviously, I know a lot of it had to do with a witchcraft attack, right? And, and demonic attacks, basically, you know? And, um... I... I didn't know what to do. I, I felt so numb. I didn't know... At the time, I didn't know about what it was to talk to God and um, sort things out with him, to let him be your psychiatrist and, and uh, just counsel me. I didn't know much about that back then. So I was basically in a place where I sat down to myself like, God, what did I do wrong? I felt like hmm, probably I did something wrong, right? And I was saying to God, like, if I did something wrong, I must have do something wrong, right? God would not allow this, right? I must have did something wrong. I just remember thinking to myself, like, what could I do to fix this and or for God to fix this and asking God to fix it, you know? I was asking God in my heart to fix it. I wasn't saying much out of my mouth, but I was basically praying for my heart, you know? Sometimes I would sit down outside all day and just look out to the sea because we live, like, basically... Our doorstep was reached by the sea, and I used to sit and look at the sea. Hmm. And then um, I, I just didn't know what to do. I started to think to myself about basically, because most people didn't know I was pregnant already, so I started to think about the shame and the reproach, like I lost a baby. At the time, I used to think like people used to look at me and think maybe she can't have a child because I'm very slim. So... People look at me as if, like, that's a qualification for she can't have a child. So I thought to myself, like, how are they going to say, oh, you see, she can never have a child and so forth and so on. And I just felt so shame and it felt like, I felt like a reproach at the time. And I felt so sad. I didn't know what to say. I didn't even know what to do. I didn't even want to talk to anybody at the time. And, um... What made it worse is the sudden attack after the miscarriage, where all of a sudden I had another um, bleeding or so forth, and it was this one was life threatening. And, um, basically, if you watch the video where I told my testimony of how God delivered me, you the ill basically break down what I'm talking about right now. Um, but basically, I remember just. I was so afraid, I was scared, I didn't know what I was doing, I just lost my baby, now here I am with this life-threatening condition, right, where I, I'm, I, I, I almost 
or could have died, basically, because I had a t I had no money for surgery at that time. There was no way I could rush to get surgery if I had no money for surgery. And so, basically, I um. I started to cry out to God. At first, I tried to do it my way, but my way didn't seem to work. I tried to do like half a day fast, but when I did that, actually, the problem actually started to get worse. And it wasn't making it much, any better than what I was trying to do. So I got to the point where I just gave up and I started to cry on, oh, to God and say, God, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? I remember crying, just crying, 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 crying for hours. God, what should I do? And finally put in my spirit, do a three-day full fast. Because before, I already did a three-day fast, but it was like a partial fast, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And he instructed, he built in my heart to do a complete three-day fast, an Esther fast. And so I did the three-day fast, but in three days, I was healed. Not only that, he had also delivered me from the spirit of fear. Not only that, after... Doing that fast, about a week after doing that fast, the same prophet that came to me the year before, told me God was going to give me a baby girl, told me that God's going to give me a child. So I said, okay, this time I'm like, yeah, okay, okay, when, you know, when, when God says he will do that. You know, this time I was like still a little numb from the, the loss of the miscarriage, you know, but I was at the same time I was happy, you know. And God did come true. About some time, just when the when God sent the prophet to pray for me and told me that he was going to give me the child, about two to three months later, I was pregnant. Because the prophet told me it's going to be immediately. And it was surely immediately, right? And, you know, nine months later, I had a baby girl, right? So my point of the story is this, right? Even though I went through all of that hardship, right? Even though God took me, allowed me to go through all of that, and and then it seems like is God's it's is God's promise ever gonna come to pass? Is God's promise? Am I gonna ever see the promise? And going through all those trials, waiting for God's promise to come to pass, I could easily give up, and I probably would have if it was for God that who up would help me. Who had saved me? I probably would have given up if it was on my own strength. I would have given up, actually. And so, I just want to encourage someone. If God gave you a promise, no matter how the situation looked, for me, the situation didn't look good. In fact, it looked like I was going backwards. Because here, here it is, I'm pregnant, and then I lose the baby. It, looked, it didn't look like I was going forward. It looked like I was going backwards. Not knowing that God was using that to push me forward, right? Because God needed my faith to be in a place that when he is ready to fulfill the promise, my faith matches up with his requirement, right? And he was already building my faith through that year, basically. You know, with all the little things that was going on, me praying to him and asking, me to, del asking him to deliver me, and he... He did deliver me through the year. So what he was doing, he was building my faith to receive the promise, basically. Right? The promise did not come out when I wanted to come, but it came unexpectedly, right? Even when it came, even when it seemed that it came, it disappeared, but then he brought it back, right? I mean, I don't, it's hard to, it's, I don't know what I'm trying to say right now. Like, I'm trying to word it the, the, in the right way that uh, you can understand what I'm trying to say. But basically, what I thought was a failure was God's way of bringing in success in my life, basically, you know, if you know what I mean. So my whole point of this story is that, you know, most people fail about witchcraft and, and witches and warlocks, you know, fighting him and stopping their destiny and yada, 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 and so forth. That's not true, right? It's not true at all. They're afraid of the devil deceiving them, but this is all of this it's not true. Fear is not of God. He said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of a strong mind, of a, of a uh, sound mind, power, and of love, right? He said, do not fear and do not be dismayed. If I am your God, I will come and I will rescue you. And I will save you with divine recompense, right? He will save us. But you have to understand something. I, I want to use a, a, a story reference that I felt like the Holy Spirit brought to me when I was sitting down thinking to myself, like, 
Lord, like, what if, like, there's so many things coming against me, I missed the promise or something like that. And this really brought to my mind, right? And I want to share it, that he encouraged somebody else too. Remember when Joseph had a dream that his brothers would bow before him, right? And they were jealous and, and they said, um, you will not bow before you. Even his own father said that. And then the brothers got jealous and secretly, they plot to kill him at first. But then they end up throwing him in a ditch and selling him to the Egyptian, thinking that, ha, we like defeated him. And he will never live out to see his destiny, right? But they were wrong. They were so wrong. In fact, God took what they meant for evil. In fact, the very thing that they thought was going to stop him, the very thing that they thought was going to destroy him, right? As his, because now they're acting as enemies. They're not acting as brothers anymore. They're acting as enemies towards Joseph. The very thing that they thought, like, did we have finished him? It was the very thing God used to bring the promise to pass. So when you think like, I have people on my job that I hate, like they are intentionally trying to get me fired. Or I have people in my neighborhood that are intentionally trying to practice evil against me. These are the very things. If you continue to hold on to God and believe his word. Look, all you need is faith. All he said, if you have faith to those who believe, they will see God's they will see God's great and mighty acts, God's miracles, God's glory. Just he says you have to believe. You have to believe. If you just believe, just believe. And most people they don't want to see this simple. It's like they make it so complicated nowadays. You have to do this and you have to do that. And you have to do this and you have to do that. But God says, just believe. That it is called righteousness to us. And even Abraham in the book of Hebrew, by our faith, it is called righteousness unto us by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. So, all this requires us to believe. Even Joseph, when he didn't understand what was going on, he st what Joseph did, basically when he was in the Pharaoh's palace and in the jail cell, Joseph still followed God. He still followed God. He still followed God. He still followed God. When the, when the, when the guy's wife wanted to commit adultery with him, he said no. And he ran, and, he and even though he did the right thing, the right thing landed him in jail. But see, all these things was working together for Joseph Good. It didn't seem that way. The circumstances around him didn't seem that way. He could have said, God, like, God, he could have said, God is never going to get me there. God's going to never bring that you to pass. He could have said that, but he didn't. He probably thought it. I don't know. I'm not always there, but... My point of the matter is, all these things that I was going on in Joseph's life at the time, it seemed like, oh my gosh, his life keep getting worse. Things keep getting worse. And first his brother sold him off. Then he find himself in a good house under part of his, um, in part of his house, basically. And um, if I'm, I hope I'm saying his name right. With his wife and so forth, you know, he was a servant in that house. And Herod, as the wife, tried to come on him. So now he got to run. The wife lies on him. He, he ends up now in prison. But after prison, you know, we, I mean, it's, it just seems to be getting worse and worse. First, a ditch, now prison. I mean, he, I, I don't know if he could probably, he probably was thinking, what could get worse than this, you know? But in fact, God took it from worse to better because now he was called from the prisons to come in front of Pharaoh, where he was, where God used his gift to get him his promotion. Right? In Pharaoh's house. Yeah, Pharaoh appointed him in a high position. This was no low position. This was a high position. Basically. So I just want to encourage someone. Don't let the devil deceive you and let you think like. Because sometimes it happens to me too. Where 
it made me believe like, oh, you had that dream last night. That means I can stop you in this area of your life. Or you had that dream last night, I can stop you in that area of your life. And I have to keep remembering, no. I have to say, when he tries to do that, I try, I say, I say, I go by the word of the Lord. And I, I fight back by God's word. Let me not say I fight back, but I use God's word to rebuke him. And he basically said, no, Satan, I rebuke you. Because the word of the Lord says that he who had begun a good work in me shall perform it under the day of his son, Jesus Christ. You, so basically, it's what God says. It's not what you say. It's what God says. And God says, I shall live and not die, but declare the works of the Lord. This is his word. And God is more powerful. So I just want to encourage someone, you know, believe in God. Just believe. Just believe. Just trust him. Just trust him. Even me, myself, I still at times struggle with believing and trusting in God. But whenever I feel myself like slipping, I, I always ask God, you know, help me with my unbelief. Like the man cried in the, in the Bible. He said, Lord, help me with my, he said, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. And be still. Sometimes being still is hard. I can tell you that. Sometimes it's like you want to go and just want to do things on your own. Sometimes you, I do. And then. I would find myself in the ditch, but pray for me, basically. But this time, I'm just going to trust God that he said, they that trust in me will never be ashamed. So I'm going to trust God that I will never be ashamed. So trust God for you and your family. And he will never put you to shame. Just trust him. And he will never put you to shame. You will never be disappointed. I, I got my promise, and it was more than I even asked for and better. But you have to hold on to God's word. And when the devil tries to come to tell you a lie, you reject it. And you speak the word of God. You speak what God has spoken to you. You speak what God has spoken to you back to the enemy and let him know you have no power over me because this is what God said. If he said you're poor, you say, no, God says I am rich. If he said you are cursed, he says, no, God says I am blessed. You don't take what the enemy is saying. The promise will come to pass. Not on our timing, but it will come to pass. Sometimes it even look like it's getting worse and worse, but trust God. Trust God. He's working everything together for our good. So that's basically what I came on here to share. And I want to also share one more thing, too. There was something in my life I was just, I basically was, um, basically passed my driver's test. You know, the first time I failed. <laughs> And I thought I would never get this driver's test. And I was so afraid. And I was like, oh, my gosh. The first time I failed because I actually accident when I was reversed, and I accidentally drive on grass, basically. And um, <laughs> that was embarrassing. And um, I, I just, I said, I knew I, knew I, got a, I had to practice more on my reversing. And I practiced everything else. I didn't practice on my reversing. And... Even coming up to the initial date, I was supposed to take my test on the third of this month, of September. The storm came, and I wasn't able to I wasn't able to take it on the third, so I had to do it on. They switched the date, and they switched it to the twentieth. So I had to I had to go out every day, ask the Holy Spirit to help me and practice my reversing on the on the on testing field, and I passed. <laughs>